It is Saturday, which means I have lots of time to work on nails. On the docket today is, I was working on these two sets last night. It's the same set. I need to finish up the details, which will still probably take me an hour and a half because there's a lot of hand painting involved. Top coat them and then move on to, I'm going to try to hammer out three of this set. So I think I might be able to get it done, but I'm always overly ambitious and then realize I have time blindness. Oh, I realized. Like the year of just realizing stuff. I'm completely out, or I think so, of my backing cards. But I've been thinking about redesigning my backing card for a little while. Like this is the old font I was using. So I have a new font. Maybe also have some time this afternoon to redesign my backing cards and send them off to the printer. Uh, I know a lot of people have questions about like the backing cards themselves, the dimensions, how I have them printed, etc. So I have a template that you can use that you can put your own branding on. This is the set I'm making. They look so janky. I've already worn these. You can see that's glue up there. But I just put them back on the card as a reference. I have two sets on the go here that I was working on yesterday. I really just have to do some hand painting. I need to do the clouds. the moment I knew I fucked up and had too much coffee. I could not hold my hand steady. A good hour and a half later, probably two hours, I'm ready to top coat. And then I'm gonna clean up and we're gonna do it all over again. I'm gonna mount these sets onto these like fake cards that I had previously made, like mock-up cards, just for now to get them off of the stands so I can free up these stands to make my next sets. On my list of things that I need to buy is more nail stands so that I don't find myself in the situation where I need to like unmount nails in order to be able to make new nails. Like I should just have enough stands that I don't need to do that. It's just as a placeholder, just for now. I recently bought this new storage tower. I don't know what it is. It's from Muji, which most of this stuff is, if you're wondering. The reason I bought it is because I thought it'd be perfect for like when I'm finished with the set, but I'm not ready to ship it yet. I can just tuck the different orders into different slots. Just as a way to like get them off my desk and have them be organized. MPF is the brush company I've worked with in the past and they came out with a new product. So that's what this package is. One of the coolest things about MPF brush nails is that you really only need one handle and then you can just buy the different tips. They're just the best brushes, honestly. So it's really cool that they've come out with dotting tools. I just use these on my natural nails. I don't remember. <gasps> I'm so excited to try these. I've been using the Madame Glam gels and I was in need of new black and white painting gels that are on the thinner side. And so I'm hoping this will fulfill that role. So I picked them up to try them because I feel like with liner gels, it's all about, oh, what is that? Oh my God, <laughs> okay. It's all about consistency and like, depending on what kind of consistency you like. I'm gonna try these out. I'll show you, here, you know what? I'm gonna show you what my, the two I'm referring to. I've had these for so long. They're like pretty, pretty gnarly and pretty empty. Every time I order from Sweetie, I always get a scratch top just so that I have a backup to my backup. This just seemed like a versatile glitter gel that could go on top of anything. My obsession with the yogurt gels continues. Just 
ran out of this one so i got a backup I designed a set using this color i wanted to pick up a backup before i actually put it on the site to make sure that i had enough of this color to make multiple of that set and then lastly i've been on the hunt for a non-yellowing milky white and i have found it i've gone through probably three different milky whites from like well-known reputable brands and they all yellow so badly but this one stays very white and it's been a total game changer i just picked this one up last time i checked out at sweetie but i immediately got a backup because i'm obsessed if you're looking for a non-yellowing milky white i got you okay this is a very exciting nail mail i've been using this product for probably like a year more than that year and a half and the company reached out and said hey we have a new one do you want to try it and i said yes please and it is the Munbin printer oh you'll have seen oh i'm just gonna turn you like look at this disaster Eight thousand cords around it and so the cool thing about the new one is that it runs with bluetooth so i'm so excited because it's kind of a hassle honestly when i have to like pull out the printer and then pull up my laptop and then get this cord from like down here try this one out cute i'm gonna set up the bluetooth on my phone All right, we are moving on to making three of the soft Koya sets. two sets in almond short extra small and then another one in coffin short extra small it's kind of rare that i get a coffin shape these days even though it used to be one of my top selling shapes and i think the reason for that is is because i used to make a lot of the like demo sets in the coffin shape but because i don't really make i make almost all of my demo sets in short round these days just because i like the way they photograph i rarely get coffin orders i'm referring back to this little list which I use all the time. Okay, speaking of standard sizes, I've been getting this question constantly lately. I've seen it in emails, I've seen it in DMs, I've seen it in comments, and it's about standard sizes and confusion about how to set standard sizes, where do these sizes come from, how do we set standard sizes if between different shapes the measurements are actually different even though they're the same numbers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I wish I had answers to this that were simple, but it's really not. And this is kind of the frustrating part about creating press on nails. So my best advice to you is no matter what, capture your customer's sizes in millimeters. And then whatever tips you're using, measure every single one of those nails and every single number in millimeters and correspond it to your customer's measurements. The standard sizes that I use are based on other press on nail artists when I started like looking around what they were using as standard sizes but they're really just arbitrary numbers to encapsulate a general size but they are not foolproof so really get clear with your customers on how to measure their nails in millimeters and then work with those measurements and the tips that you are using. The other option is to encourage your customers to buy a sizing kit, which is especially important if you're dealing with different lengths, like an extra short length might not work on someone with a long nail bed. So have them measure, offer sizing kits, and if you wanna offer standard sizes, I would go look at what every other press-on artist is offering and then try to get like the average of those numbers. And you just have to keep in mind that like standard sizes are gonna fit the same way that like standard sizes at the mall are gonna fit. It might fit you, but it might not fit as perfectly as if you had something tailored to your body. And it's important to communicate that to the customer and or offer more than 10 nails in one standard size so that there is some variation within a size itself. To be honest, this is an area that I'm still struggling with and trying to make sense of. Uh, I wish I had like all of the answers and I'm kind of shocked that somehow I'm now like an authority figure on what people should do. I don't know, guys. I have no idea. I'm trying to figure it out too. The sizing part of press on nails is complicated. It is hard.
I just walked to the print shop to pick up my new mounting cards that came in. I got right on time because I need to ship my orders. This is how they come when I pick them up from the shop. They like vacuum seal them. They actually cut them for me. So I send them the file in the dimensions I want and they print and cut them to size. So they're already done. What I'm gonna do is put some double-sided tape on these and then mount all of the sets that I have already made on these like temporary backing cards so that I can ship them. While we're here, what do we think of the new design? Here's it in comparison to the last one. They're just a bit simple. They have the same thing on the back. Tell me what you think. If you hate them, <laughs> that's cool too. I've been really wanting to revamp pretty much all of my packaging. So this is kind of step one in that process. But it's overwhelming. Like, is anyone else completely overwhelmed by the packaging side of owning a business? Because same, there's just too many options. Can finally properly mount all of these sets onto my mini ami branding cards they look good in this light don't they look how nice they are it's like i had a hard time capturing how cute these were on camera they're immaculately cute oh uh, stop this would be like extra short extra small shape I would normally do this step when I take the nails off of the stand themselves, but this is just a quality control where I have a look at the back of every single nail, make sure there's no gel that's like overflowed. If there is, I give it a little file and then I wipe the back of each of them with a little bit of acetone and alcohol to make sure there's no nail dust and they are clean and ready to be mounted. First set ever on the new backing cards. Don't they look good? I'm so excited.
Can you spot the other packaging upgrade? Hint, it's the silver poly bags. One of the things I also want to work on is right now I'm putting the nails and the application kit and the receipt kind of just all directly into the poly mailer. And it feels a bit like I'm just chucking it in there and a bit unceremonious if you were to be opening it. So I'm working on putting all of those things into one bag inside of the poly mailer. I was checking out this order and this is my last like line of defense to make sure everything that's in their package is correct it says soft koya almond extra short custom why am i left with an almond short and no almond extra short mm, i made a mistake brutal I made a short not extra short which is devastating <laughs> it means these are custom size and i need to completely remake them i gotta do that now before i ship these tomorrow luckily this custom size happens to be my exact size so i'm actually currently wearing these nails as i'm recording this